So, oh, yeah, that happened in Gadget's class. What happened in Gadget's class? If I forgot to do what? No, no, no. The course evaluation? Then you would be like the other 90% of the students that don't do it as well. Seriously, do the course evaluation. I mean, our goal as a college is to get like 80% participation in doing it. But I dare say that my classes, I'm like, I'm lucky to get 20% and I'm like, you don't know, but I just don't, I only see my number. Yeah, completely anonymous. We don't see the results until next semester. So it's not like I can look and say, oh, okay, I can see the way this class is. Do it. Because that's part of the, that's the big, how many of you better talk to the dean? How many of you know what the dean looks like? Carrie does. Yes. That's so. The, yes. So that's it. So, um, how she can get feedback about what y'all think about instructors? If y'all need feedback about what you think about instructors, right? To know whether okay, this is a good person, bad person. This person taking care of business. This person class is train wrecks. We need to think twice on putting people in there. We need to think twice on do we renew this person's contract? But yeah. Squeaking wheels want to get some grease. If they know squeaking, they know grease, right? Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. They, they value the feedback. And like I say, it is completely anonymous. You know, they ask for like written in, typed in comments. If I got to go, well, you type it in. So I can tell handwriting or that kind of junk anyway, but I won't see it until next semester anyway. Uh, yeah, so I did one of my plans. And when I looked at it, just said, I didn't do it, and I did really show that I went to the next person I showed up that one particular class and said I didn't. I don't know what happened there, but I'm like, I didn't know that you could keep up with it once you break up. I don't, I don't know. That's how a little, I, I don't go into the system. I don't know. I don't see, I, it's not tied to Blackboard or anything like that. The link is just having to be on the first page to go into Blackboard and have to do course evaluations. But that's it. There ain't no connection, no way, no how to. I won't have a clue who did it and who didn't. But, and be honest, and the, the college really bothered me. But anyway, yeah, for those of y'all that just came in, for whatever reason, we stumbled into, I'm having a weird day, and we stumbled into, like, go easy on me, doing course evaluations in a couple of months, and so that it ended up being an infomercial about doing your course evaluations. So, so, for those of you following along at home, do your course evaluations too. Uh, all of you that are watching. So um, we're gonna I'm gonna finish this chapter, then we're gonna do the homework. We've only got like six slides, but there was like the last problem or two on the homework is about stuff that we are about to we haven't quite covered. But then when you talk about it, then you look at the homework and oh that makes sense. Everybody wins. Um, but then the test is this is what seven module seven? Chapter test module six. So then test is four, five, and six. So test Thursday, four, five, and six. Uh, and these things didn't change the question. Test is only two questions, but is that my compete all I can manage? Okay, so we did talk about contribution margin, right? Did we? Okay, so we didn't talk about it. I'm just having flashback to this. Okay, so contribution mark. Oh. I can't remember the example we were using the other day, obviously. Y'all probably took computers. But we were, some, Sam was driving a car, right? Sam was driving a car using it to make deliveries, corporate waiters, delivering people because he's a river driver, delivering moonshine because he's, thinks he's from Franklin County. Um, which is my neck of the woods, by the way. So I'm not going to be y'all supplier unless y'all show me a bell over 20 months after play. So, no. okay. <laughs> okay. So, he was making some money. Every mile he was driving, he was charging his customers like 50 cents a mile or a dollar a mile, something like that. 50 cents a mile. And at that 50 cents a mile, he would take like 10, 9 cents of it, I think. And he would put that 9 cents to every mile, and he got, would have to go toward paying for his gas, paying for his oil. Right. 
And then that gave him 41 cents that was going into this other bucket that I was referring to to accumulate up until he got the whatever $600, $660 maybe that he needed to pay for the car insurance, the car payment, the driver, the license plates, all that kind of stuff. Those fixed costs. All right. Are you sure we can talk about this? I'm serious. Okay, what's the slide at? Because we might have um, supply costs, fixed costs, variable costs. Oh, yeah. You did it. Thank you. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so, what ended up happening, uh, so now that we're on our same page here, is, is the idea of he's bringing in 50 cents. That's 50. Um, of that, he's bringing in 50 cents. Oh, gee. Of that 50 cents, nine, that 50 cents per mile has to go to gas. So every mile he's driving, the money he's making is contributing 41 cents toward paying his fixed costs. Toward paying for the car payment, toward paying for the insurance, for the license plates, that kind of stuff. But then once the car payment, insurance payment, and everything has been paid, then it's 41 cents for each extra mile contributing to his party fund because it's profit now. Because once he's got to fill this bucket up, then decide to put money in the third bucket, which is the profit bucket, right? So this is the contribution margin. The higher the contribution margin, obviously the better. Because your variable costs aren't going to really hurt you a whole lot, and so you get a whole lot of money to be contributing toward paying off your fixed costs. Gary, get ready for a flashback here in like 20 seconds. Um, I can pull it together. So, the nice thing I was talking about is to consider it as a percentage. And in this case, his contribution margin was what, 41 cents? Compared to the 50 cents. So, 82% of the money that Sam is bringing in is either going to be contributed for paying his fixed costs, and then after that, for paying his variable costs. You accounting people, then financial people, the 18% difference here, operating margin. All right. That the, the, the cost of goods sold, in this case, the time, the gas, oil. Tired, that kind of stuff. That's where we're getting to the operating percent. So this would be his sort of reverse profit margin. That's it ain't exact. Don't hold me to that new counting matrix. That's kind of what this number is. So the more the greater the percentage of your money that you have left over after paying the variable costs, the more you have available to pay off your fixed costs. And this gives you flexibility. So guess what? Most of the money is going to repay the fixed cost, so he may not have to work very hard in order to get the money he needs to pay off. But then, compared to somebody else, I can remember who we were picking on. We picked on was it Will or yeah, it was Will and his. He had you had what van? Oh, it was Connor. Connor had the van that didn't give as good a gas mileage and that kind of stuff. So if Connor's contribution margin is only like sixty percent, well, guess what? If his van was a $30,000 van, but Sam's car was a $30,000 car, guess what? He ain't making as much money per mile as Sam is, so he's going to have to drive a lot more miles before he pays off the van payment, right? So it's going to be a lot harder for Connor to make a profit, right? Because he's got to do a whole lot more driving to get the money he needs to fill up his fixed cost bucket than Sam will. To what? Congratulations. So how many miles does he need to drive in order to get the money to fill up this bucket, get all $660 he needs? 
consider 82% of the money he, you know, 82% of the money he's bringing in is coming in. So how many miles with 82% is he going to need in order to fill up this bucket? That is the break even. Said the last couple questions on your homework was. If I transition my way beautifully, that is what the next slide is, I hope. It's either the next one or the one after. Okay. So here's the example. Just 44% of their money for the company with their Here we go. The contribution margin determines how many units need to be made in order to start making profit. How many miles Sam need to drive? Each mile, put 41 cents in this bucket. How many miles, at 41 cents a buck, uh, mile, does he need until he has to pull $660? That's what the break even is. How many cakes does a bakery have to bake in order to make enough money to not only pay for day sugar flowers, but to pay for the oven, refrigerator, the delivery truck? How many chickens does a chicken hunter need to assassinate in order to not only pay for the bullets, but to pay for the rifle too? Yes, we buy in human resources class where we have chicken assassins as the sample job. So, the break even, we want to pay for all the fixed costs. So you take your total fixed costs and you divide it by the contribution margin, the dollar contribution margin. So if Sam, uh, we're going to go with 660, it may have been 662, I don't remember. Does anybody remember? We'll go with 660 with those, that be whatever reason. Or goes on brain can handle anything else. And he's making. 41 cents a mile. So 660 divided by 41 cents a mile is going to come out to, I'm going to guess about 1400. 1600. Exactly. 16. Oh, 1609.75. Is that what you got, George? So, if Sam is driving that car 1,609.75 miles, earning 41, charging his suckers 50 cents a mile, getting 41 cents to go in that bucket, 1,609.75 miles, 41 cents will give him 660. So if he does more than 1,609.75 miles for the deliveries, he's going to start making profit. How much profit? 41 cents a mile. It's going to be profit. You always, no. In this case, can you drive three quarters of a mile? Yes. Can a bakery sell three quarters of a cookie? No. So no matter what this decimal is, if you got to do something, you always need to round it up. Because 1,609, that ain't enough. If this number was 1,609.001, well, 1609 won't be enough. If you only did 1609, you won't quite have $650 in the budget. Right? So you always need to round up. So Sam needs to, you ain't going to be sitting there staring at the odometer. He's going to say, if I do 1,610 miles worth of deliveries each month, charging them suckers 50 cents a mile, and I keep my driving to where my gas miles is where it should be, I'm going to break even. If I can do more than 1,610 miles worth of deliveries, woohoo, store, I'm profiting. In all honesty, per month, that's not much driving. That ain't not, yes, that's not a whole lot of driving. Let's see if you figure, even if he's only driving 20 hours, he's Monday through Friday, he's taking the weekends off. That's 20 days. 1,600 miles divided by 20 days is that's not even, not even a couple hundred miles a day. No, that's like, yes, not even 100 miles a day. I can't do that. Can you do that Ubering? I hope so. Can you do that moonshine delivering? Yeah. So, but, but that's the question he's going to ask is, he's got to ask him, do I think I can do 1,610 miles worth of deliveries with this car each month? 
with these people willing to pay me 50 cents a mile to do it. If you lived in Dundas, taking people to town, no. So he wouldn't buy the car. But if he's living in the middle of town somewhere, he's living in South Hill, he's living in Richmond, he's living in Raleigh, something like that, yeah, he, maybe it's worth his time to go out and buy the car, pay for it. Yeah. I've purposely left out the whole, and this is part of the calculation of taxi cabs, is they only charge you when you're in the car, but they don't charge you for your time driving there. Like Sam isn't going to you. Sam is you call up Sam and you say, I'm here to college and I want to lift to Walmart. Sam's gonna show up here to college and he's gonna give you a ride to Walmart and he's gonna charge you that 17 miles. But Sam doesn't charge you for the five miles that he where he's driving from his house here to college, and then the 20 miles for him to drive from Walmart back home. Well, actually, so the car well, so the car's driving more miles than on the job than he's 1,610. He's got somebody in the back seat. So you've got to do that calculation there. So instead of charging people 50 cents a mile, what does he need to do? He, start doing some math. Half of the driving that I'm doing on the job is being done without somebody in the back seat. So instead of charging people 50 cents, he at least needs to charge them. But at least, at least to make a double the variable cost of gas tires, right? He at least needs to do that part. He can prorate it. He can say like it starts off like your your starting price starts at, say three dollars and it goes up forty one cents every other mile. Yes, that's, that's what, what a lot of taxes do. That's what a lot of taxis do. They charge five dollars to show up, five dollars for the first mile, something like that, and then a buck and a half each mile afterwards, kind of thing. That's the way uh, 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 Yep. For that first mile, yeah. Because they got to get paid for driving from wherever they were to getting to where you were. Where oh. you are. So just five dollars for the first mile. Five dollars. Yeah. So, uh, so you're not going to sit there and just, uh, okay, drive around the block about five times just quickly. But, uh, but just, I was ignoring all of that, but just for any one of you that was sitting there like, well, in reality, I'm trying to keep it simple here. Yeah. He can do 1,600 to 10 miles worth of deliveries, charging people 50 cents a mile. Bam, he will make enough money to pay off all of those fixed costs. His car payment, insurance payment, license plate, inspection sticker, county sticker, all that. Bam. And then, so what happens if he does 2,000 miles? He's going to have almost 400 miles worth of 41 cents a mile. He's going to make almost $200 worth, well, about $150 worth of profit. Woo. Sure. So. so let's go to Connor. We assume his van, we assume his van got the same. Or if it had the same price, so let's assume you had the same insurance price, the same van payment per month, but that van isn't as fuel efficient. So in Connor's situation, he also needs to raise $660 a month to pay for his van, but the problem is he's only clearing 30 cents a mile because he's using 20 cents a mile in order to pay for all that gas that big band road hog is burning up because he's only getting about 12 miles per gallon on. So what happens there? 6, 12, 18, it's over 2,000 a year. Oh, 7, 14, 21, no, that's going to be about 2,300. So what's he got to do? He's got to drive like 700 more miles than Sam just to break even, because his van is less efficient. So if you got a Prius, you straight. If you got a Prius, yes. You're then the, the Prius. Well, that may turn at forty-one to about forty-three, and so that turns at sixteen oh nine to fifteen fifty or something like that. So, but times get tough. 
the economy gets hard, a bunch of people in the town lose their jobs, so they're less likely to be calling Connor or Sam to be getting rides somewhere, but I don't even ride to Walmart when I ain't got no money to spend there. All right. And I'm not going to call an Uber, go into the Walmart and steal stuff, and then have an Uber be my getaway car. Just don't do that. Um, you know, I'm not speaking from experience, so no. So, if times get hard and sales slow down, who's going to have a better chance of staying in business? Sam will, because mileage gets cut down. You know, maybe he's got a better chance of raising the money he needs because his car is more efficient than Connor would have. Who has, you know, who has the better opportunity to, I'm going to lower my prices. Sam can better afford to lower his prices. Because he could be evil and lower his prices to run Connor out of business. Because what happens if Sam lowers his price to, I don't know, 15 cents a mile? He turned his contribution margin from 41 down to 6. But what did he do to Connor? Turn his contribution margin to negative five. Which means every extra mile that Connor drives, Connor is paying an extra five dollars, five cents. Not making, he's losing more. So what's Connor going to do? He's going to park that van as fast as humanly possible because the longer he's driving, the more he's losing. So what's he get? He's out of business. Sam is a different ah, sir. And then his price is back up. But then he jacks his prices back up. But he wastes your Connor's van rusts enough to work on it. He can use it like the business game, right? Yeah, but don't you didn't you say that some people spend it and people are doing the Yeah, and as a, Connor would have to be doing the math, I'm sorry to flood or he goes yell following along. Connor's gonna have to do the math about this game of chicken. How long can I afford to keep losing money? In this case, once your contribution margin becomes a negative number. That was in the, yeah, you stop working right now category. But if he thinks, okay, or you stop driving it, but maybe he doesn't shut down his business because he thinks Sam is only doing this just uh, for a few days, a game of chicken kind of thing, then he's going to hold on. But if he thinks this is the new reality, that this is what Sam is going to be doing for the next six months, the next year, something like that, Connor's cooked. So, who has pricing power in this business? The most efficient producer. Okay? Wrap your minds around that because when we get to module, I don't know, nine, we're going to come right back to that again. Maybe module 10. Oligopolies, duopolies, monopolistic competition, whatever that module is. Is this six, seven, this, this is it? Yeah. Yeah, module nine. Let's go. Uh, okay. So, uh, for our book company, that example, for those of you following along with the slides here, it, their fixed cost is $100,000 worth of trucks, printing equipment, and that kind of stuff. They're selling their books for $9 a piece, but there's $5 worth of ink, paper, labor, and electricity. So their contribution margin was $4. So $4 of every book that they make goes toward helping them pay their fixed costs. So if they sell 25,000 books, they'll make the $100,000 that they need to pay off for all their equipment. And then if they can do more than 25,000 books, woohoo! What is that TR? TR is total revenue. Okay. Oh, of course, these entire lines. Uh, this is just for the book example. The class. Um, if they sell 20, we just said they need to sell 25,000 books, right? I'm going to prove that this is right. 25,000 books at $9 each, they're going to make $225,000 going into the cash register. Their total cost is the $100,000 for fixed costs, and then it's $125,000 worth of 
variable cost because that's the expense of printing 25,000 books. 25,000 books, their average fixed cost is $5 each. We just saw that on the last slide. So their total cost is $225. Oh, shoot. I have it right here. That's, of course, thing lining up, but just hopefully you're not colorblind and everybody right away. So the total fixed cost is $100,000. We already talked about it. Here's Connor with his name. Do not get in the bank with Connor. You know, he, you might get sit somewhere else. That's what you get. Movie fake loose too. No. Okay. So uh, the total variable cost for this 25,000 books at $5 each. So their profit is what? Zero. Right. Yeah. The total variable cost was $5 per book. Times twenty five thousand books is one hundred twenty five. Then you add the hundred thousand dollars for the total fixed cost. Cost income exactly the same. Um, let me. Okay. So total revenue on cash. Um, be prepared. It's just price time quantity. So. What was that? Nineteen hundred and ten. Same age drive. Nineteen hundred and ten miles. At 50 cents a mile, that is $955. His total cost, well, we know his total fixed cost was the $660 of lunch work, his car payment, the insurance payment, that kind of stuff. His total variable cost is. 1,910 miles times nine cents each. Somebody with a calculator, please put the brother up. Uh, Ten cents profit. 
Well, what happens if he goes from 1,600 up to like 2,000? He tries an extra 400 miles. That's all we're talking about. So he's increasing his driving by 20%. Okay. 25%. So um, total revenue would be, what is it, 2,000 miles? His income is $2,000. Um, this is still 660, so that is 2,000 times 0 0.09, which is 180, 660, 60, 40. What is his profit? His profit goes up to, for 10 cents, to $160, just by driving an extra. 25%. See how huge his profit is going to increase from there? The first 1600 does nothing. Then an extra 200 is going to put him, for extra 400 miles, is going to put him $160 with profit. He used to do 3000 and go instead have a month where he does 3000 Well, that's going to get him another $410. So he would end up with $600 worth of profit. If you did 3,000. Once you clear this hurdle, once you clear this break even hurdle, your profit should grow at a pretty good clip. But the bigger your contribution margin is, the faster that's going to grow. But the unfortunate thing is, for most businesses, their profit margin may only end up working. We talked about this in class the other day. It might end up working out to be five or ten percent when it does settle. A lot of businesses are very much by by. But they're hopefully their gross profit margin, or really this number we're talking about, is ends up being like twenty percent, which hundred sixty out of a thousand piece at sixteen percent gross profit margin. So out of out of that hundred percent. Well, no, because that's after he's paid for all of his costs, including his bribing politicians and taxes and all that kind of stuff that all is going to be paid in. Are we being on the No, that's, that's going to be. Well, bribing your politicians could be a fixed cost or it could be a variable cost. If it's a constant, you know, you got to meet the dude behind, meet the sheriff behind the gas station, give an envelope worth of cash every month, and that's going to be a fixed cost because it's got to be the same amount each month. But if it's sort of the, you know, every time you drive by, the cop's going to pull you over and ask you for a bribe, well, then it's going to be variable cost because the more deliveries you're doing, the more often he's going to be pulling you over and harassing you. Right. Just find you. <laughs> Y'all not have crooked cops around here. Like, you only have crooked cops around here. I'll find myself apart and get out here. But visually speaking, for you visual learners, we've got a couple of interesting intersection points. The first one is where the average variable first one is where your average variable cost and your total revenue is the same. The second one, I get the line to come back is where your average total cost and your total revenue is the same. Once your production, at, at this point, once your production gets past this point, you make it a profit, right? Sam's break even with 1,610. If he does less than 1,610, he ain't making a profit. He's taking a loss, but he's still helping to pay for the car. He's paid for all the gas, he's paid for all the oil, and he doesn't have the full 660 in his bucket, but maybe he's closed, right? Maybe he's down here and he only did 1,500 miles, so instead of $660 in here, he's got 600. Well, that's got the most pain, everybody, right? But then you have this point down here. This is where your average variable cost, in this case, that nine cents a mile for the gas, you can't do enough delivery to pay for your gas and your tires, stop. You park the car, you park the van. 
So what kind of are we doing? Right. So at this point, if you can't rate, make enough money to cover your variable costs, if your revenue cost per mile is less than your cost of gasoline, you don't operate. Once it gets past that, then you start keep driving and you do more and more and more until you covered all your fixed costs, then hopefully you keep doing more and more and more and make some profit. How much profit? If you can squint, visualize this little piece of the pie, that's your profit. A few visual errors. Um, for you non-visual learners, I say that there is a 80% chance I'm going to have you identify that point and identify that point on the test and think of that as that would be fast. Which means I think I have probably just cut and pasted this picture out of my PowerPoint and stuck it on the test number or somehow made it work. If I've gone through all that effort. So that's the way to do Yes. So Sam's break even is sixteen hundred and ten. He does for the sixteen hundred and ten. If he can keep doing, if he can do two thousand, he is making profit, right? Where for Connor, his break even was more of what twenty three hundred, twenty four hundred. I can't remember what number we came up with. Something like that. It was out here somewhere, right? Connor has a harder time breaking even because his van isn't as fuel efficient. Economies of scale. I'm not just talking about this because it almost has my name. Economies of scale is the idea of as you produce more, your average total cost gets lower, your production gets more efficient. The more miles that you end up driving, the more that you can spread out the cost, your fixed costs. So that will improve your contribution margin, improve your profitability, give you more flexibility, and lower your price. You're making better use of your fixed assets. I think I used to talk about this the other day. Every day that that tractor is sitting in the garage, it ain't making you money. Every day that that oven is sitting there without a cake in it, it ain't making you money. The more cakes that you bake in, the more cakes that are making you money to pay for the oven. The more miles you're driving, the more miles that that car is making money to help make, pay off the payment. The more acres the tractor is running, plowing, the more acres that are going to be making money to help pay the truck payment, the tractor payment, whatever that thing was. As you increase production, your average total cost gets lower and you end up becoming more efficient. And that's the thing why when companies that went in like they did, have y'all seen Samsung's new foldable phone? Have y'all seen that thing? Yeah, and they just announced it Thursday. Sunday, maybe, Monday, Friday. Anyway, sometime. Sometime last week. At Mobile World Congress, anyway, in Barcelona. But it's a foldable phone. Then it, it'll open up to a seven inch tablet. But then you fold it and you have a screen on the outside and you can have a crack time worth of bezel on the top of the bottom of it. Okay, that's the price paid. Thank you. $1,980 for the shipping price of the thing. The shipping price? Yes. Well, that's what it's going to sell for. Yes, yeah, the, the sales price. $1,980 for this thing. Well, why is it so expensive? Well, how many do they think they're going to end up making? Selling? Not many of them. So are they going to be gearing up a production line and getting super efficient and producing these things? No, they're going to start building a little one off here, one off there kind of things. Yeah. And cover uh, the I mean, yes, it's just six hundred dollars versus yes. what a thousand or no eight. I think it was eight or nine. Uh, like 850 and 950, maybe I think for the other two, yes. Oh, um, so they have the 89. Oh, 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 no, the, the A series is lesser. The I can't remember the other series that have it's lesser. The, the S, what is what used to be the S? Is it still that? It's E now. Oh, no, that that's the E said the end. Yes, I'm thinking it used to be the Galaxy S1, Alex, the Galaxy S2, S3. Eventually, they got rid of the S, but anyway, anyway, but they ain't making very many of them. They're not getting efficient. But as Samsung, as we all like, dude, and so the Galaxy S12 that's going to come out two years from now, all of them are going to be having foldable screens. 
and they're going to be making their other tablets that we have foldable screens. The Note 12 is going to have a foldable screen. And other companies will be calling and saying, well, we'd like to buy some of those screens too. And so they're, instead of making hundreds of them, they start making thousands of them. Guess what? They're going to get more efficient. And so the price will end up coming down for these things. Right now, that first one, right at $2,000. But the one that you're going to be getting two or three years ago, the first time that y'all actually are going to recently consider it, it's going to be around $1,000. Well, right now, don't, no. And right now, somebody comes up to you talk about a phone with 5G, it roll your eyes. Yeah, that's not true because it hasn't all been installed. That's what I used to do was install the networks on the towers. And that, 5G has not been installed everywhere to cover it up. You know? 5G yeah. hasn't been installed much of anywhere. Yeah. Well, they're, they're talking, it's in that. yeah, they're talking, the way they look at it is coverage of the, not the country, country, the coverage of the population, and they're thinking they're going to have 20% of the population covered in two years. Yeah. You can cover 20% of the population by covering like a couple cities in California, covering Houston, Dallas area, and New York. It's going to be wild yeah. on 5G. Right now, if you get a 5G phone, it's going to be slow and it's going to get terrible battery life because it's sitting looking for a 5G signal that doesn't exist. Don't get a 5G phone. And it's also like $400. And, and don't buy the bull crap that at and is going when they put it. They just updated your software so it's saying 5G when it ain't 5G. Just. Yeah. No. And I'm speaking from experience because of that, because I had the first ever, the first ever LTE phone, the HTC Thunderbolt. Oh, right. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a nice phone. You had the thing on airplane mode, but I mean, it just, you could just sort of sit there. I mean, you weren't quite watching the battery thing go 100 back down zero, but it just, the battery, like, was sitting there looking for signals. It was a, it's like hitting the passenger that you can't you know, spot that gas deal. Yeah. yeah. Because they're the end of Can't you reduce it in like on a settings to a 4G mode? Um back is it on a Thunderbolt, I don't think you had that option. I think and that's part of why I was rooting the things and hacking the things and stuff, because I think I ended up doing that so I could do that so I could get better. Well, I actually moved away and put a whole new software on things because that's what I was doing back in the day. I've actually helped wire your phone to have wireless charging. I've actually done a couple of cracked cover with the phone. It's relatively easy. That's not cool. cool. It's power sharing they have going on now. Oh, yeah. It won't charge another phone, but it'll charge your phone. But anyway, okay. Rabbit hole. Um, here's an example metaphor that I use sometimes. Talk about my friends. Sun drop. My hero is sun drop. They're mixing up their soda in a vat in a tub, maybe the size of this classroom. So they've got one person standing there, supervising, mixing, uh, I don't know, 5,000 gallons. What Coca-Cola? They sell a whole lot more than sun drop, right? They make a whole lot more than sun drop. So instead of mixing Coca-Cola in a tub the size of the classroom, they're mixing Coca-Cola in the tub the size of the building. So you have one person standing there watching over 50,000 gallons versus one person standing there watching over 5,000 gallons getting made. So average it out, who's going to be more efficient? Coke, because they're just paying one person's salary to get 10 times the soda that Sundrop is paying. So that gives Coca-Cola the ability to charge a lower price because the economy and scale, they're getting more efficient. They're making, getting more soda per worker because they're making more soda because they can't make more soda because they can sell more. Unfortunately, for our sun drop, they no. Uh, sun drop actually, I think now technically belongs to Dr. Pepper, which I just learned recently. Just today, I heard that the, the, the Dr. Pepper belongs to some company out of Europe now. That is kind of freaking out. But anyway, um, but no, but the. Coca-Cola Incorporated, there's two Coca-Colas. Coca-Cola Enterprises, Coca-Cola Bottling. They're two separate companies. When we talk Coke, we think Coca-Cola Enterprises. They're the people that make the soda. There are these bottling companies that bottle a soda. Some Coke is bottled by bottling companies that belong to Coca-Cola, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company. But there's some 
Coke is bottled by other companies that they hire out in different areas. Just like some McDonald's belong to McDonald's, some McDonald's belong to a local doctor, that kind of thing. And so what ends up happening is you have some of these independent bottling companies that, yeah, most of our day, we're, most of our month, we're spending bottling Coke. But we've got a couple of, but we've got 20 days worth of work we can do, and we're open 20, 30 days this month, so we've got three days that we're not going to have the machine sitting still. We'll subcontract out and fill up some bottles with sun drops. You bring us a syrup, we'll make it have and fill up, help the doctor, whatever, that kind of thing. So, usually, so there's some places you go that a plastic bottle for sun drop looks the same as a plastic bottle for a Coke. But in other parts of the country, you go in a plastic bottle and the sun drop comes in, looks like the plastic bottles that the Pepsi Mountain Dew are coming in. It's just the which independent bottling company is are they contracting out to be taking their product and putting it in the bottle for them. So, not the only thing to know that, but okay. There you go. So economies of scale, few visual errors, average total cost, getting luck. What could you get into this? Hey, go like this. And then what? Then it goes back up, and once you, but we're hopefully you're smart enough to realize uh, once our average total cost is starting to go up, you've gone too far. We, we've got too much stuff going on where we're working our people overtime and all that kind of stuff, but we're stepping on each other's toes and all that kind of stuff. We're wearing on trucks and they're constantly close. So what do you do? Maybe you cut back production, or you end up adjusting things, buying more tools and equipment, that kind of stuff. To adjust, but in the short run, you're going to try to go here. So, the homework. Let's see. Question number one Our fixed cost is $800. So, we got $800 worth of car payment insurance, and we're driving 200 miles in order to do that. So, what is our average fixed cost? $800 divided by 200 miles, $4. Well, see that here, I can scroll things when my board cooperates, unlike yesterday. Okay, question number two, our total variable cost, $21,000 worth of oil, gas, that kind of stuff. 3,500 miles, so 21,000 divided by 3,500 is six. Six, what are we? Oh, yep, yeah, six. Yeah, that's it. Yes. Oh, so I remind me at the end, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about a couple of rules for doing calculations. Oh, no, I'll tell you right now. Which is going to be bigger, the total number or your average number? So, total number. So, if I give you the total number and I'm asking, giving you the total, I'm asking for average, you're going to be dividing because you're looking for a small number. If I give you the average number, I give you the small number and I'm asking you for the big number, what are you going to do? You can multiply. So, it's either adding or multiplying, either swimming upstream or downstream. So, the total is. Total is Average times quantity, right? So, so average is going to be total divided by quantity, right? It's the same calculation. You swim it upstream or you swim it downstream. It's still the same water, still the same stream. It's kind of flooded over the moment, but right. So, if I'm giving you this, if I'm asking for this, you multiplying. If I'm asking for this, you divide, right? So, help you remember. Um, okay. Dude, total fixed cost, 500. Total variable cost, 300. So your total cost, 800. 800. I gave you a couple totals. I'm asking for the third total. Boom, there you go. Uh, 800,000. Um, question number four, total variable cost. I'm asking, I gave you total. I'm asking for average. So what do we do? What are we dividing in the end? Isn't that what we did with first thing? Two? Okay. So this is 12,000 divided by 3,000, that's four. Okay, this is the one that I wanted to get to. This is the one that y'all might have had to look at. Well, this one. 
I'm asking for total calls, right? What is total calls? Total variable cost plus total fixed cost. Total variable cost plus total fixed cost. I gave you total fixed cost. What did I not give you? I did not give you total variable cost. So what do you have? You've got to calculate total variable cost, right? So how do you calculate total variable cost? Average variable cost times quantity. So that's 12 times 10,000. Our total variable cost is 120,000. So 120,000 worth of gas and oil, 100,000 worth of car payment, 220 to be our total cost. That, that question might be a little bit of a literacy issue for some of you that ended up missing up the first time around. Now look. Okay. Question six. Our contribution margin of the $12 that we're bringing in for each one that we're selling, five of it is going to variable cost, so that leaves us $7 to contribute toward paying off our fixed cost. So this is 12 minus five. This one here, okay, contribution margin is what? It's price minus ABC. Contribution margin would be 10. So for each item we sell, we get $10 that we can use to help us pay the 50,000 that we owe. Right, so the 50,000 that we owe divided by 10, 5,000. So our break even is 5,000. Unfortunately, I made that easy for you because only one of them had the right contribution margin anyway, right? So, what did you subtract the last question? This one? Okay, the last question. question. This is important. Hold on. Yeah, go on. Oh. Okay. 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 Oh. oh, I should have done the exact thing. Uh, it was um, price oh, minus eight. Same thing. Oh, minus five. So that was question seven and question eight. This was taking our step through everything. Total revenue, that is price times quantity. We sold 8,000 of them at $25 each. Revenue is income. Don't be remember, who do you pay your income taxes to? Income taxes, who do you pay them to? What's the name of the department for all this thing? IRS, what does IRS stand for? Internal Revenue Service. Revenue. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. Revenue is income. What? Yeah. Um, just, just took a really like backwards way into yeah. just, just saying revenue. Yeah, but it's just to help you remember your income tax goes to the Revenue Service. So there you go, because that's what they're taxing is your income because they cover the revenue. So our income, we sold twenty five thousand of them. Eight thousand of them had twenty five thousand dollars each. That's eight, sixteen, twenty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So our total cost is going to be. Oh, I didn't give you total variable cost again, did I? Is that evil? Okay. Our TBC is going to be fifty dollars each times eight thousand. So that's hundred twenty. Twelve thousand. No, eight thousand. Yeah, 120. So our total cost, 120 variable cost, 50,000 fixed cost, 170,000 total cost. So our profit is we spent 170 in order to make 200. So what did we do? We made 30,000 profit. Right. And this is when you do Fortnite dancing. I'm not going to do Fortnite <laughs> dance. It's, it's thirty thousand profit. Boom. There you go. Y'all still playing Fortnite, or y'all moved on to? We moved on. Okay. What have we moved on to? Apex Legends. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. Oh, so much. Yeah, it's I so many laughing. Yeah. Like Apex Legends. Yeah. It's so much. 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 It's so much.
time to be play video games. I can't remember where the buttons are. I got to sit here looking. Yep. Try to play some on the Xbox or something like that. I'm looking at you, then I got to look down and see which buttons I got to hit in order to do it, and then I'm shot to dead. It's starting to die. It's just starting to die. Okay. You always make that. Okay. So, module four, five, and six is death. Module four is labor stuff. So, we talk about supply of labor, demand for labor, minimum wage. What you call that thing? Efficiency wages, um, the financial the intermediaries. That's when we talk about saving and investing and borrowing and interest rates. And then module six was supply costs, which it ends up then without the math that co cost, our fixed costs, all that kind of stuff. There is a I'll, I'll put it like I would like to do it. I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to do it because it's me. But I, there is an interesting chance that if I can, and things start breaking my way instead of breaking me, um, I'll actually have the formulas on the sheet for the back of the test for you to use. But don't expect them. Yeah. Study as if they're not going to be there. And if they're there, you say thank you. If they ain't there, be okay because you've already studied. All right. The other thing is the homework is still available. I think it goes way midnight tonight, like Cinderella's bump, right? Whatever the card is, whatever the thing is. Yeah. So um, do the homework. If you didn't do it, just, you know, we worked it through in class, but you may not remember it. So, you know, work it through. Once you get the answers, put them into the computer. And if you didn't still end up getting the wrong answers, with it, it'll tell you the right answers. Go back and put them in and get a 100 on homework. Really, seriously. Okay. It's like free. Hundreds, just, 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 but do the math, do the practicing, so you'll be successful on the test. Because hopefully, when you worked it out and you put the answers in the computer, you find out the why was my total cost wrong, and you didn't realize because I didn't tell you the total variable cost that I had about. Right? So, and those math questions are going to be like the ones on the first test, it's going to be blank, same going to be multiple choice. Just because I'm not that creative to come up with plausible yet incorrect answers without giving away the farm like I did on that one question. And just, I can't do that. Okay. Y'all with me? Okay. There should, there, there, there should be extra credit. Uh, I am going to go ahead and stop here.